right here tonight. I have a few dusty uh, tubes and a box of uh, things that I'm going to try that I've had in my position or my possession for quite some time now. This video is, should go uh, public on the 13th of April 2020. Now it's being pre-recorded on the 3rd of April 2020. Um, that's almost two weeks in advance. Is that right? Yeah, week and a half, whatever. Um, I've got videos already loaded on YouTube, which will go, uh, or which have gone <laughs> public between now and when this one will go public. So someone left me a comment today, or was it yesterday, that said, I really enjoyed that. And I just said, I'll make more. So here I am making more. Tonight, I have here a Highland whiskey with some dust on it. This is the Glen Glassaw. But which one? I did one not too long ago that was a portwood finish. This is the sherrywood finish. Um, counterpart in the same series. So it says um, Glen Glassa. There we go. Uh, Pedro Jimenez, Sherry Finish, Sherrywood Finish. So I don't know. I'll find out what, what it's about. I Sherry can either get me right or wrong. Um, most Sherry Finishes and sherry maturations are too much for me but there's a few that even though they may be sherry bombs they are great like um, different different expressions of Glen Farkless I haven't had any bad ones I haven't had many bad ones I had one that was uh, called the West Coast edition of Glen Farkless and it had a, a First Nations painting of a whale uh, on the um, oh come on you I'll use a toothpick to pry this open come on what's it it's just a little pull tab I think I got it now I think I got it now I think I may have yes I have the pull tab now there we go wood top cork I'm having some good pops lately. And this has a nice aroma as soon as I have opened the bottle. What does it say about this one? I'll read what it says. Our master distillery, distillery, distiller Billy Walker has selected a limited number of Pedro Jimenez Sherry Casks to finish maturing our Glen Glassa single malt Scotch whiskey. Uh, during this second period of maturation, the whiskey um, interacts with the wood, adding an intriguing range of flavors and aromas specific to the Pedro Jimenez Sherry Cask www.glenglassaw.com, Glenglassa Distillery, Port Soy, Letters and Numbers, Scotland. Okay. And, yep. Finished in Pedro Jimenez casks, 700 mils, 46% alcohol by volume. And the price was... Glen Glass uh, PX finish one times 700 mil. That would be the one. $92.99. So $93.09 with the bottle deposit. Uh, $9.40 with the um, uh, liquor tax. And uh, $4.50 and $4 
four dollars and what ninety cents four dollars and seventy cents for the goods and services tax that's right so four four and thirteen that's seventeen on top of ninety three that's one hundred and ten dollars Canadian at the time and the time was the 19th of July 2019 so I've had this for a little while <clears throat> let's see now or let's smell now that's the good way hmm. I'm getting some fresh fruits some fresh darkish fruits some things like dates dates raisins uh, figs prunes maybe a bit uh, did I mention currants black currants and uh, that's sort of like an overcoat that's covering everything up. What I should get beneath that, if I really pull hard, some vanillas and caramels. And maybe a bit of nuttiness. I don't know because it's all covered up by those dried dark fruits that I'm getting on the nose. Yeah, it's a bit of a multi note in there too. Yeah, maybe this uh, sherry finish is not overdone. I have a quick peek at the legs. Oh, they just do like a cascade sheeting action in the dishwasher. Although I don't have a dishwasher, I have seen commercials since the 19, well, in the 1970s when I was a kid. Cascade sheeting action cleans your dishes. Yeah, it just sheets right down. There are drops sticking to the side. There are little trails, trails of drops from where the legs would have been, but there were no legs. They just sheeted right down. I don't know if I'm washing my glasses wrong or what, but sometimes the, the whole legs thing just does not work, and this is one of those instances. Oh, well. So the, the test was botched. Hmm. Smells nice. I'm getting some, it's a bit of a savory note too. Uh, it's like a, like a miso soup or something like that. And you may wonder why there are chairs back there by my whiskey wall. I will explain to you that. These were on the deck. I picked them all out of the garbage, right? And all of these chairs were on the um, on the balcony because I'm on the second floor and it's a balcony out there. And the balcony is shared with others. Uh, one of these chairs, I believe it's the one on this side, was already there when I moved in. And it was the neighbor's. But then the neighbor moved out, another neighbor moved in, another, that neighbor moved out, another neighbor moved in, and another neighbor moved in last year when I was um, just shortly after I got back from Scotland. And that chair was out there through four neighbors that I had over there. The other two I picked out of the trash. It's just uh, maybe a place to sit if it's a nice day. That's if I'm awake in the daytime. And uh, maybe a place to put things as you're reaching for your keys to open the door instead of put, putting them down on the ground. You know, bags of groceries and stuff. Just put them on the chair. Well, eh, now you know why they're in here. No, you don't. I didn't tell you why I had to take them off. They're going to put new railings on the balconies uh, in a few days. And that's going to make a lot of noise in the daytime and I won't be able to sleep. That'll be just a lot of fun. But they're putting, they're going to be redoing all the railings on all the balconies here. Uh, and so the railings, um, they, they need access and they want everything cleared from the balcony. So in the, I, I brought them in here. And once the new railings are put up, I will put the chairs back outside. 
It's not like it's a big problem to have them in here. Anyway, so much for that aside. The wall is holding up very well back there, can you see? Hmm. It's beautiful. It smells good. But I detect quite a bit of sweetness, like the raisins and currants and Let's, uh, I'm curious to see what this tastes like because there's a tinge of something like um, uh, like something overripe in there and that, that may be the sweetness from the Pedro Jimenez. Let's see. Mm. Oh yeah. It's sweeter than your average sherry. Oh, another thing. Um, why I don't have a glass and why I have these. Up until a couple of weeks ago, I was able to get my drinking water from a reverse osmosis machine at the supermarket. But now, because people are touching the machine, they have uh, shut down all the revo all the reverse osmosis uh, water purifying machines in the supermarkets. So now you can only buy bottled spring water rather than the more economical and just as good uh, reverse osmosis purified water. Because frankly, the tap water here is terrible, and I wouldn't drink my whiskey with it. So I have to buy spring water. Uh, fortunately, there was enough there, and it. It didn't disappear as fast as toilet paper. And so I'm able to uh, still drink water. I'm, it's like being at a whiskey festival where they give you piles and piles of these bottles. Mm. It's good. So now uh, I'll give you another second sip and let you know what I'm getting from that. I like the chewy, viscous, slippery alkaline mouthfeel of this one. It coats the mouth with sultanas, prunes, um, dates, figs, dried dark fruits. And there's a sweetness like sultanas and um, just an extra sweetness from that. And it's quite exuberant. I like the way it coats my mouth all over. And there's some wood tannins as well coming in. It's a spicy, sweet coating of the inside of the mouth. And it seems to hang on for quite a while. It's a much more interesting twist than your regular Oloroso sherry cask. Um, yeah. And now it, 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 it fades slowly and fades and fades. Now there's less spice. There's still a coating. There's still a coating of the, a drying coating of the mouth with a little bit of sweetness in it. And going down the throat, there's a little bit of that hug. Um, it's sort of a sweet, it's as if I can taste it with my throat still. And I'm still getting it on the tongue, and it's still coating my mouth. This has a beautiful long finish. I like it. I have, since I started getting Glen Glassa, I think the first one I got was a Torfa. And then there was a Evolution that I also got. And then there was another one, which was the, oh, what was it called? Was it called the uh, Renaissance or the... Uh, I forget. I'd have to look at my old videos and see uh, what they were called. Evo there was a, a the Torfa, there was an Evolution, and there was another one in that three-part series. 
Um, then they had other ones special finished with uh, with the octave casks. That was a good one too. And the other one, the port finish was nice, but I think this, I'm not usually a big sherry fan, but this Pedro Jimenez is growing on me and it might be preferable to me. Uh, prefer preferable to the port finish for me. I don't know yet. But this is lovely right off right off the top of the bottle. I'm enjoying this. Mm. Get that sweet mouthfeel. And it's not too sweet. It's not cloyingly sweet. It's just sweet enough. Very interesting. Very different sherry note. Okay, now I got the the uh, the, the the Swedish sweetish sour, slightly sour uh, dried fruits, and then there's a vanilla note underneath that trying to creep through, and um, it's coating the mouth once again. Once that thick, chewy, alkaline, slippery mouthfeel goes down, it's hugging me again. And it's like I can taste it with my throat. It's incredible. It's still on my tongue. It's hanging on. This is a very nice whiskey. If you can find just about any revival, that was the name of that other one. There was the, the, the I had the Torfa first then the evolution, and then the revival, but the order in which they came out was the revival, the Torfa, and the evolution. I can still get Torfa at the whiskey shop, uh, and it's it's not too expensive. They still have a few bottles left. Uh, I'm a Glenn Glassoff fan, but it's one of those that seems to just, just fly beneath the radar of so many whiskey enthusiasts. It's not, it's, it has no age statement, but it doesn't matter. It's so delicious. I don't mind spending $110 on this, which is really funny because um, tonight I went by the liquor store before they closed. They closed earlier than they used to. And I had my heart set on two things because I had a space in my Canadian whiskey that was empty where I had just finished a bottle of... Um, 40 Creek Copper Pot, got another one. And there was one Highland space missing. There was one empty space in the Highland section of my bar. And that's where I bought a Glen Geary 12 because they had some. And the whole total bill for the Glen Geary 12 and the um, um, 40 Creek Copper Pot, the price for the whole thing, including tax, was $103 score. All right, well, I'm going to, wow, there's not much left. I think I'm going to have one last pull on this and um, let's say slanchava. Food quick. <laughs> Food quick. Food quick. Food quick. Food quick. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>